I think it's really important that people start out playing safe. So, so we want to first just, one. <laughs> we want to start with. Obviously, <laughs> it's gonna be. The girls are still wearing their clothing, unfortunately. A fantasy of mine is like a gang bang. That's just hot to me. This week, uh, we have a Tara topic. We're going to talk about being... Tara topic. It's a Tara topic. Okay, <laughs> so, bitches. Love you. Wow. Tara gets saucy. Welcome to Sex Interrupted with Tara and James. I am James, and I will be your sexy, swinging lifestyle host today. We are here to empower you to explore your sexuality and learn more about non-traditional relationships. The Swinger Lifestyle has transformed our life. Meeting each other has shattered everything we thought about normal relationships. Maneuvering our way through non-monogamy has transformed our view on sexuality, sex, and relationships. Uh, We produce a show every week for your listening pleasure, and our sponsors make this all possible. We truly appreciate their generosity and everything they do to support us. If you're interested in sponsoring our show, contact us at sex.uninterrupted at gmail.com. If you like our show, get social with us. We are always available online. Our Instagram is sex.uninterrupted, and we love to share our sexy stories all day long. We also have a Twitter account, SX Uninterrupted, where we can share our racier content and a Facebook-like page. If you go to our website, sexuninterrupted.com, you can find all the links and all the dirty deets. Now, for the start of the show, the smoke show! Um, we are sitting in here, so Tara's not here, obviously, you haven't heard her speak, so it's just me. I have brought three guys into the uh, studio today, and... <laughs> We smoked a joint right before we started here. and it's, it's legal. Because it's legal in Canada. <laughs> um, and we smoked the White Widow. And the White Widow is uh, amongst the most famous strains worldwide. It's a balanced hybrid, a powerful burst of euphoria, and energy breaks through immediately stimulating both conversation and creativity, which I guarantee you this will be entertaining. <clears throat> this week, I am doing this show alone and invited Michael, Terrence, and Stan to the show. And without further ado, I would like to introduce the three guys I have joining <laughs> me on the show today. And this first segment, we're going to get uh, kind of talking about these three guys and who they are and what they bring to the LS community, non-monogamy sort of style. So we're going to start with some quick introductions. First off, I'd like to say thank you guys for being on the show. No problem. No, thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, that's Hopefully Stan. I help the ball team. So we got Stan, Terrence, <laughs> and Michael. And so I'm going to ask you guys just a general couple of questions when we start out here. Um, how <laughs> long? <a> <laughs> How long have you guys been in an LS relationship? Start no, off. Somewhere. Not everybody jump in first. Yeah, um, go ahead. I've been it. Uh, let's see, about five years with my partner, and uh, like by five yourself. and a half by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And Stan, so you've had sex. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think fifty years by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck. But but uh, no, I, I I think we're going right around six seven years. I'm probably very similar to you. Uh, Michael, Michael, Michael. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, in this September, actually, we just rolled over the uh, 10 year mark. So. Oh, we're not quite yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, you've been a little while longer. Yeah. So you kept some more miles. You were yeah. 19 when you got in, involved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I didn't right. ask everyone that their age first, but <laughs> you know, that's we're, okay. We're not doing ages here. Um, so I just kind of want to talk about your LS experience. Like, when you first encountered the LS, um, how was it? <laughs> awkward yeah like i we were pulling out of the driveway to go to the first experience if you will i had to pull back in and go in and change my shirt <laughs> I'm like, sweaty. Awesome. Oh, and i wear an undershirt too right <laughs> and i mean holy shit and this like, is calgary so it's cold right? yeah so really i mean cold. it was it was uh it was awkward i mean it just we didn't know what the hell we didn't know shit from Shinola, right we were our first experience with a real lifestyle club uh there was a club here in town and we parked outside of it literally like we showed up whatever at 11 o'clock so right. there's a bunch of cars in the parking lot and we like made a pinky swear to each other that if we walk in and everyone is like this beautiful, gorgeous, statuesque creature, we're just turning right around. Right? Yeah. And, you know, we walked in and we stayed. Or if your parents are sitting there. <laughs> I mean, that'd be awkward, right? But I remember that. That was just like that wow. sheer adrenaline rush of, okay, yeah, no, we're going over the cliff. 
Right, yeah. right. And yeah. did. Almost taking yeah. that leap. Yeah. Do you remember those Going swinging doors in the yeah, video <laughs> stores? It's like walking through those and you don't know who's on the other side, yeah. right? Yeah. It is. It's it's intimidating. Yeah. Do you want my single my single guy experience? Yeah, how was that? Experience? So I just got out of a shitty relationship. I'm like, screw this. I know there's swingers clubs here. I'm going to just look them up, Google it up, send them an email. I'll send them some pics because I figured, hey, you know, you you probably want to know what it looked like. I'm a single guy. I know it's probably not the the deal. It's probably not easy to break into. Went to the local club here. Yeah. Was sitting down and, and this I, I felt like a piece of meat just up <laughs> against the wall. Look, seeing all the eyes just kind of focus because now I realize you're the new, you're fresh meat. You're you yeah. haven't been here before. Did you have a my name is Terrence? No, but I looked yeah. sharp at it. Nice tie on, I looked spiffy, nice right. red shirt. Cleaned up. And so anyway, it. got attached this chick attached on to this girl attached to me and we're talking yeah this chick this dame this broad comes up to me and she's like hey i like the cut of your jib no (laughs) she yeah we're sitting sitting at the table and she looks over at this girl dancing on the pole and goes oh fuck i want to lick her pussy and i just oh what this is so awesome you just say what you want, right? and, and that was like for me. It was just so it's that Holy honesty shit. factor almost. So you yeah. were you were in. I was in. You were hooked. So as you I like you've described your first one. Do you find it to be good? Like your first experience was it a good one? Well, I mean, I defined good. I mean, it was. Different. It was an experience. Yeah, you just yeah, learned yeah. from it. Yeah. So I gotta say, it was positive from that perspective. But I mean, it was. Uh, you know, we had strike one was on the scorecard. I mean, if we didn't things didn't pick up <laughs> you know figure we didn't figure it out we were yeah. done right i right. feel like it's like your first sexual experience you're fumbling around you don't quite know what's right. going on and then as time goes on you get a little more confident so you know what's going on what are, we, what are we talking about are we talking about like the first time would be first sexual experience yeah let's go with that time? oh okay go with that or go with just that. Like a, you well your first time ever experiencing that unless that's like the true non-monogamy yeah okay so uh, our experience was i mean we went a few more times to the club and we ended up going to this one club nice i can't remember what party it was and we struck up a conversation with a lovely couple and there was definitely you know that four-way chemistry chemistry it's talking about and we're yeah. thinking okay if we're gonna make the leap let's do it with let's get guys, in right so whisper 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 right. whisper and you know communications exchanged so the vibe Do you it's the vibe it's right there. it's there so Magic. we get up <laughs> they get up and then four of their friends get up because apparently they <laughs> all accrued the <laughs> so we just a package deal an orgy so that was our first sexual experience so that's so a question to not ask not the then, most eh? intimate well there you go I mean, th- there's definitely uh, questions to be asked like is it just the two of you or should how yeah. many are in your party <laughs> how many are <laughs> Is it, is it a table for four or eight? <laughs> right. Right. So, right. Yeah. so yeah, so that was definitely a different dynamic, right? And you know, let alone you know, who's straight, who's bi, who's playing with who, and yeah. you know what the permutations but, are. But you see, though, that just adds to that radar that yeah. you develop over time. Absolutely, right? I mean, that's just one more instinctual thing now, right? It's, I call it a Rubik's Cube, man. I still yeah. feel like I've only solved the white side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll pull the stickers off and put them That's back. That's it. But like, right. being in it for 10 years, you've obviously found a way to make it work. Oh, uh, oh yeah. I mean, I think there are ways. There are, there are successful experiences and less successful experiences, right? I mean, I think it comes down to the communication you have with your spouse and how you, you know, work through stuff, how you kind of get to that next gate and go, okay, this worked, this didn't, how do we do it better next time? Everything so, comes down to communication. Yeah. All, that's it. Yeah. That's, we well, we could parents, go on for I, hours I, I about like that. Your phrase. Like right? I, I, when I met you, I borrowed your phrase because I remember Terrence and I talked about this when we first met. It was uncomfortable oh. honesty, right? Yeah, it is. It's and important to be honest, they, especially when it's uncomfortable. Should we be talking more about sex, though? Because like, yeah, I, I feel know. like the girls probably had talked about like their <laughs> you know, vagina monologues or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, the female won't come out till next week, but um, I don't know what they talked about because I wasn't involved. Probably in about it. us. Yeah, yeah probably, probably about your wieners. wieners and all your wieners, dirty wieners. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, like when you when you guys started out, what were your guys' rules and boundaries? Oh wow! Like, like ours were just short of being accepted into some sort of nunnery or convent. Like it was like <laughs> we'll hang out with somebody and. You know, it was just, we didn't even, again, what are what are the rules, right? But 
We, what are the parameters? Yeah, and, what, and what rules can you have? <laughs> and just understand that that's such a moving target. That evolves, yeah, yeah. shrinks, and grows, stretches, and contracts like throughout the whole process. But like you know, one of our hard and fast rules was it's like no texting, right? Mm-hmm. So that was no texting the opposite sex. That's right. No texting, no texting the opposite sex. We had that rule too. Yeah, yeah. same. You know, and and so. This, it evolves. That's, well, you're you know? you're unsure. You're venturing in the unknown. You don't know what you're going to encounter, so you put up all these defense mechanisms right. to protect Perfect. yourself from the potential. That's exactly right. Fear based or of, lo- of loss. Well, you yeah. did it by yourself. Did you have any rules for yourself? Well, when Jennifer <laughs> and I flexible. got together, we yeah. said we're doing this together because we talked about not wanting to be monogamous after right. previous controlling bullshit relationships yeah so we started together right from the start uh yeah our rules we had like the prime directives the three prime directives nice you, nice you, touch so number one we didn't she said i don't want this to be a revolving door i don't want to be a quote-unquote swinger i don't want this to be a revolving door <laughs> because again fear sure. i don't know fear of the end what that almost, right? yeah. looks like and then we got into it and realized well it's just whatever it is. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And it yeah, there's all sorts whatever. of different types yeah. of lifestyle people, So defining people, right? it, it's different for everybody. Yeah. Right? I, that's well put. Michael, you guys went to a club, so you guys must have had rules in the get-go. No. Like, well, other than no idea. <laughs> really? We really had Well, you guys no didn't idea. play with anybody in the first well, little that's bit. Right. So. That's right. And in fact, the first couple that we, outside of the past, the orgy, our second experience was with a couple that was actually... I'm not going to say who, because anyway. well, it's, probably <laughs> it's people. Yeah, it's probably it's people. people. Um, no, but uh, the, the lady of the other couple asks, me, well, okay, because they were experienced, we were not. And she's like, well, where's your big sort of, you know, scroll of rules, right? Like, what rules do we have to sort of respect? Bye, bye. Yeah. And that was the first time I actually went through and said, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Should I have There's come with rules. some rules? <laughs> you know, because now she's clearly disappointed that we didn't come with any sort of restrictions. But, I mean, over time, it kind of, not rules, but I would say just understandings developed within the relationship, right? It was kind of like, yeah. so for us, the big one was, or we tried to respect that, you know, if it, we, we both play or we don't play, right? Especially yeah. if it's like a scenario where one of us is sitting in a court, because that was a big one for us. We didn't want yeah, one person yeah, yeah, to be yeah, yeah. left yeah. alone and the other yeah, person have the time together. Life. Clearly, I felt more threatened by that, <laughs> yeah. right? Because the oh, guy really? generally really? is not going to have... I don't see that. It's I quite... Well, like, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Uh, but then, you know, other things like about safety, right? Like, you know, yeah, always yeah, yeah. protection Condoms, because yeah. Number one. That's, that's sure. Yeah. Or two or one, <laughs> whichever way you want to put Well, if you're not used to it at a certain point, it kind of becomes like now this sort of uh, aspect of your lifestyle that you always now are just kind of rolling through and they're always there always has an ebb and flow to them. Um, I think that was great. Thank you guys for that first segment. We're actually going to have to cut to a quick commercial break. Because the sponsors pay for all this, so they got to get their ad time in. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about what the uh, LS has done for you in your relationships. Stay tuned after the break. We are a busy couple. When we aren't working on a radio show, you can find us hosting events and travel in the world. Downtime and connection is important to us, and that's why we're so happy to have a high massager in our house. The High Massager is a unique personal massager that can be used fully clothed. It helps men and women relax amazingly fast and has the power to give women some of the most intense orgasms ever. We love decompressing in the evenings with ours and it gives us a deep and restful sleep that we need to keep our energy high. Want to get one of your own? We were able to hook our listeners up with $100 US off when you use the code SEXUNINTERRUPTED with no spaces at checkout. Go to sexuninterrupted.com slash sextoyshop to get yours today. Isn't our audio sounding sexier than normal? Wondering why? It's thanks to our member-only community. We have a member-only Patreon account where we share all kinds of exclusive content and behind-the-scenes footage of ourselves. It's the only platform where we share the more intimate side of ourselves and are so happy to have it. Membership starts at only $5 a month and gives you access to our sexy blog, never-before-seen travel photos, a chance to join in on our monthly live stream smoke show, and more. Not only that, you are directly supporting us, which means we get to invest more into our biz and get things like a sexy new mics and hiring a videographer. Visit patreon.com slash sexuninterrupted and choose a membership tier today. (laughs) 
<laughs> Welcome back to Sex Uninterrupted with James, because Tara's not here right now, and that's okay. <laughs> so in this segment, we're going to talk about um, what the lifestyle has done for you and your relationships with um, your family, stuff like that, as well as your muggle friends. Um, so I guess my first question that I want to ask is, um, what attracted you to a non-monogamous relationship? Uh, sex <laughs> with other people, variety. <laughs> I always say there's nothing wrong with variety, and I've said it since day one. But, yeah, so, like, what, is, what attracted you to it? I think it was just a, a sense of adventure, maybe. I mean, it, was, it wasn't necessarily, you know, s- driven sexually. Maybe just more of a raw curiosity, right? I mean, just having to, raw, right? to walk through those doors and see what is on the other side, right? You know? yeah, that's always a great, great question when people ask that because... Um, always at the beginning it was like when we were talking about doing this with the spouse the other half mm. uh, whatever name we make up for her it yeah. was always like are we doing this because there's something missing right and yeah. the answer was always no no there's not anything missing in particular but we're just curious as to what's well, on the other actually that's always interested me because Jennifer and I started together we were at the same place and so we did this we went into our relationship knowing this is what we want to do we're doing it together we're experiencing everything we were non-monogamous to get yeah we were we started non-monogamously yeah Yeah. but i've always wondered about you guys Mm. we're we're like the how did you come to that how did you come to that i'm married and yeah yeah. how did you come to the point where you're like you know what we should fuck other people and stay together and do this because how long you been married for michael before the lifestyle or now because just no well <laughs> so do you get remarried <laughs> we were bored again no i was uh, no i'm with the uh, first first uh, you know we my original well, quit showing off my life. <laughs> shut up <laughs> uh no we've been married uh i can't like for 20 plus some years right oh, so right. at that point we were 17, hell, we get home. <laughs> 17 so years far, into this how far in to your marriage did you decide that's what i mean about 17 years in we were like oh, our kids and then we're like hey Want to screw other people? <laughs> How did it come up? Well, that's just funny part. It was it came up for us almost simultaneously because as it turned out, like we started joking about it, making funny cracks about it that, you know, oh, so-and-so, well, yeah, I me. Mean, don't you want to bang so and so? Yeah, just yeah, yeah. just little test little lines. Little test lines, Throw which was line and, and w- w- at first I thought pillow it was just, talk too, I, right? Well, at first I thought I was throwing out the the questions, and then suddenly those things were being echoed back to yeah, me, yeah, yeah. and yeah. all of a sudden it's like, wait. Are we, are, are we talking we, about the same are we, thing here? Are we on the same thing Do we just become best friends? We're all best friends. But now, God, now, now, we... now you're just a little bit more interested. Not that you weren't before, <laughs> yeah. but now you're even more interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, That's interesting. And what, That's like, what attracted you to like, again, Well, it was just a, I mean, we, we were at a, I think it was a Christmas party or something, and... <laughs> The yeah, dude, the, one parties. of the dudes brought up this club that he's been to and uh, so on and so forth, right? And he's very upfront about it. And we kind of looked at each other and went home and a few days passed. And it was, hey, it wasn't even, I mean, it wasn't me. I mean, the shower door opened and, you know, uh, Samantha said, hey, what do you think about, should we check out that club? <laughs> and I'm, of course, I'm, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm high five, right? I'm fist bumping and high five oh, yourself, right? right? Yes. You know, I act a little reserved, and well, I don't mean it's up oh, to you. Oh yeah, but, you know. I'm not. I'm not really. I've been I, thinking I'll, about I'll, it. Really. I'll, 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 yeah, you should take the lead on this one, sweetheart. But if you want to, I guess. Yeah. Right. But that's yeah. I mean, that's that's where it came about. That's awesome. So taking that path down non-monogamy, what do you? Th- what is like? What is the one of the main things that has changed in your life? I shave a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of yeah. grooming. That's, no, that's a good point. Yeah. Like there's there's a lot of good external pressure to stay fit, watch oh, what yeah. you're eating. It's true. A lot of I, positive I stuff be naked. there, right? Yeah. More. Yeah. Right. But you guys have all been to like a resort where you can be naked. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you become more comfortable with nudity comfortable, than other yeah. people. But you 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 recognize like when you look and we all, you know, our, the girls are all very much the same in terms of, you know, you don't leave the house with 19 how do I looks <laughs> thrown your way, right? And I mean, it's a big deal. And they go to so much effort that you start to say, hey, 
fuck, I got to tighten some my shit yeah, up a little yeah, bit, yeah. right? I mean, look yeah. at what you know my bride's doing, and yeah, you yeah. want you just want to look good and be healthy. So, but yeah. sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you <laughs> Jay, that's like part. Sorry, sorry. Door okay, I'll go. All right. No, I think uh, yeah. I mean, so for sure, there's uh, to Terence's point, uh, there's definitely a physical component to the lifestyle, uh, at least in our experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's also, I think, a mental yep. shift. A That's where I was going shift, as well. Right? Like, there is just the way you ingest other people's crazy, other people's kinks, other people's, you know, openness to it. And just in how we take it to the muggles, to the vanilla world, uh, you know, you find you look at things with a completely different lens. You Absolutely. Know, I'll, come back, to, I'll 100%. come back to that story when we talk about things like Ashley Madison and how that's both a good thing and a bad thing. Right. Right. Because sometimes maybe you shouldn't be looking at things with a swinger lifestyle. Or lifestyle. I, I find it, it makes you focus on yourself and, and your, your boundaries and push yourself and reevaluate things constantly for me anyway. Well, well it goes back to like a self love thing almost, yeah. right? Like it's learning. I think the one thing that for me that changed the most was that I became more honest. Yeah. I became yeah. more brutally honest. Cause that's what we've talked. I think all of us have talked about it, that the brutal honesty it takes to be in a, a non-monogamous relationship yeah. and be able to have that sort of honesty with your partner yeah. as well as other partners like again because there's some people that are in it for a completely different reason yeah, yeah. and again when you don't have that communi- level of communication where you're being as honest as humanly possible you can find yourself in a position where you're not necessarily going to be as happy as you thought you might have been yeah. you, have to, you, you have to be honest with yeah. yourself first you, right that's absolutely. a huge one right like yeah for, you do for me especially probably the first five years of the life style i thought there was a certain way we wanted to do things certain yeah. way we wanted to play that i wanted to play now i'm much more comfortable with the whole thing just yeah. because i know what i want i know what i like yeah i can be honest with myself and others yeah you know i feel you fuckers but still <laughs> not feel judged or feel <laughs> like you feel like you're in you know the old the trust tree or you're in yeah. the com- comfortable situation and it's i mean that's when the real person comes out Right? That's when the real real people come to hang out is when you're feeling that most I always say that the lifestyle doesn't build character and reveals it. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I couldn't agree more. We've said it numerous times that, especially when it comes to your relationship, that the lifestyle is like a magnifying glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It will literally mm-hmm. magnify everything that's going on in your relationship. All your insecurities. Now, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and it can make it better but if you don't have that solid foundation from the get-go yep. it can definitely bring to There'll light all a, the things that and the up. sun on the other side burning so are we saying there is also a, a darker side to the lifestyle by virtue of the fact that some of those imperfections are magnified right i mean well, let's you be just honest, gotta be prepared it's, it's like it's not all <laughs> when you ask right? a question there's two answers to that question yeah. and, and in the lifestyle when you when there's action it's like you know, there's all a, a, an opposite reaction. There's mm-hmm. there's always something that I shifts. Talk in physics. You got to be prepared to, <laughs> to to talk about it and and understand that what yeah. was there today might not be there tomorrow for these reasons. If you're not prepared right? to go down that road, you're gonna crash and burn. Well, and be able to take whatever happens. Yes, because you can't control prepared it in yeah. terms of emotional stability. If you're not emotionally right. secure or emotionally intelligent enough to be able to grapple with some of those things. It's going to be a tough... You're going to have a tough time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you, yeah, but I think you can develop that emotional maturity oh, absolutely. within the lifestyle. Because I'll be honest, since we're being honest, <laughs> I don't think I was there. Like, yeah. I'll be, when I stepped into it, the first... Few times I wasn't I either. And, uh, and you kind of... Le- you, you sink or you swim. Yeah. Right? To you. I mean, it'll, even in the last... Are you going to say you had months. this figured out? Oh, okay. <laughs> in the last two months, I've learned... Yeah. So much. That you think. And it's yeah. like, holy... Sh- you know, holy shit. Yeah. And... and trying to wrap my head around things and, and certain aspects of, and it's like you know I'm just you know you're just learning and growing I mean it's it's I don't know when you stop and well, that's do, the thing right? we always say like the it's rules and boundaries are an ever evolution yeah. and your whole relationship is an evolution and we're probably going to touch on eventually at some point talking about like an LS burnout where your yeah, lifestyle yeah, becomes yeah. you get to a burnout yeah. point where it's almost like you just need to take a break to bring you it back there, to yeah. the yeah. bring it back to your relationship so after talking about that do you think that the impact of the lifestyle on your life has been a positive one or oh, could it yeah. be a negative one, one? 100% I would yeah I Obviously, sex, dynamite, but we'll get a little misty-eyed here. 
just the people that have <laughs> yeah brought that has come Best into our lives in is insane. This ring. The, the the depth. And we've had lots of breadth of relationships, but the depth that we have now, yeah, you know, is insane. Oh, yeah. It's it's right. Well, it, and it's taught me how to handle other situations in life, sure, much better because I've had to work so hard to push through some really difficult situations in lifestyle and through with my partner, whatever, personally, that the rest of life benefits from it. Right. Yeah, you're growing. That's yeah. um. I guess it's been good. I can't leave it. it yeah, feels like exactly. It. Well, that's the whole thing. Really. Uh, nobody like, gets out. Nobody gets out. So, so <laughs> you know, to people who are listening, be careful what you ask for. Right? This is yeah, like that yeah, one yeah. of a red well, pill, green pill, pill, whatever. A, like, a red pill, blue pill. Red, yeah. red pill, blue pill, pill yeah. yeah. You, you're not going to be able to leave it. No, because, well, I mean, you could conceivably leave it, but you'll be bored. Yeah, you're, you, you, yeah. yeah that's, that's a great point to bring up because... It sounds like oh we'll just stop. Well, you know, once you're in the once you you're always at different spots. Yeah. I say once you open the floodgates of honesty, yeah, it's hard to go back. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to go back. It is a relationship because we've all been in relationships where we couldn't talk about the things we yeah. want to talk about. I can we talk both, about everything. Yeah, That's now great, I can literally bring up anything and everything. Yeah. and like what her reaction is, I can't control that. I can't sit there and say that what you're gonna how you're gonna react to what I'm gonna say. I have no control over, but I have to get that out. I yeah. have to say it. I have and to be you, able to break that down and be able to say, this is what I want. And if that's okay with you, great. If it's not, well, let's talk about it. That, that is not something to take lightly. If no. your partner wants, like if you want out or your partner wants out and you're not on that page, that's a that could be a deal breaker. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Because oh, you've all sure. of a sudden yeah. drank I mean, from the we, I guess, right? I guess yeah, going back to rules, I guess we did have one veto that we both agreed on. Are we done? Yeah. <laughs> we can come back to it yeah, in just no, a sec, sure. but we gotta cut to a quick commercial break. So stay tuned after the break and we'll be right back. Travel, events, parties, and clubs are a huge part of the lifestyle. It's how you connect with the community but sometimes it can be hard to find out what's going on, especially when you're traveling and don't know what's out there. That's where Cassidy comes in. If you're looking to attend club events, meetups, resort takeovers, hotel takeovers, you name it, Cassidy makes it so easy to search. We also like the fact that you can post your travel calendar or rendezvous so people can see if you're visiting their city or if they're feeling frisky. So go to Cassidy.com, K-A-S, IDIE.com and use the code AZSEXY, A Z S E X Y, for a free 30 day elite membership today. This year at Naughty and Nolens 2019, we had an emotional moment when we were crowned king and queen of the event. NIN is one of our favorite events, and it was an honor to be involved and recognized in the community. Next year, we will be returning to hand off our crowns, and we want you to join. Come to Nadia Narlands with us July 8th to 12th, 2020, and see why we keep coming back every year. Plus, when you get tickets through us, we will send you a personal thank you email and add you to our NIN mailing list and help you prepare for NIN 2020. Visit sexuninterrupted.com slash naughty to book today. <laughs> Welcome back to Sex Interrupted with Tara and James. I am James, and I am here with Michael, Stan, and Terrence. And we're talking about sort of the men's perspective of the swinger lifestyle, non-monogamy, consensual non-monogamy, all those different forms of relationships. Now we're going to talk about some tips for men from men that have been in the lifestyle. As you can tell, we have a little bit of experience in this room, so it's not... Um, like, I guess, tips from newbies, but we can give tips to newbies. Um, I think we're just going to start it off. What is the biggest lesson you've learned from non-monogamy? I know we kind of talked about a last one a little bit, like about yeah. what, how it changes your perspective, but like, what's the biggest lesson? Holy shit. Man, you're just really no judgment deep here. Why not? Oh my God. Mine's, I know. No, mine's no judgment. I think biggest lesson. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll be honest with cool. you. This is this is a lesson that we should learn in, in like elementary school, but it's been again we talked about the lens and the magnification that sure. lifestyle brings on things. It's consideration of other people, Empathy. especially mm-hmm. your oh, spouse, yeah. and especially in scenarios that continually crop up because people say, well, if we put down these rules, 
then we're safe. You're not. You're yeah, furthest yeah, thing yeah. from being safe just, because AI, yeah. the rules will shift just and get broken. Fork in the road. Maybe yeah. the rules today. And and you just have to consider what your what state your spouse is in. And then to your point, uh, Stan, mm. uh, from that you brought up earlier. I mean, it is a community, right? So you have to be considerate of members and mm-hmm. actors within mm-hmm. that community as well. And really, I mean, it's grade school, elementary stuff. But yeah. really, it, it, the my lifestyle is so much better when you're sort of... That, that was the one thing that taught me. Really. But it's amplified because you're yeah. dealing with emotions and potential okay. well, like oh. explosions from waiting to happen. Yeah. As I say, yeah. once you get into the threesomes, foursomes, or moresomes, it starts to get way more complicated because you're like taking that one sort of unit of you and your partner as where you are and what you're doing, and you're just kind of extrapolating that exponentially when you're oh. starting to deal with somebody else's. Yeah stuff and what they're dealing with and how what they're in and again like and the permutations of all of the different and you, possible relationships and your judgment let's not fucking kid ourselves there's some mm-hmm. non-quality judgment time that's going on you know yeah. at one in the morning and you're looking at your spouse <laughs> and is she look she's looking at you and oh she wants to you know you're reading and you get home and it's like fuck, I couldn't have been more wrong about <laughs> yeah, what exactly. she was trying to tell me, right? And it's like, oh, God. You so know? you wanted to be there? No. I thought you wanted to oh, be there. Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, neither one of us wanted this. to be there. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, that's it, really interesting. There's, yeah, I mean, it's it's just lesson after lesson. Just be ready to learn. And don't and don't uh, judge yeah. yourself about it. I mean, you're going to make mistakes. So. Don't oh, beat yeah. yourself up too hard. Yeah. So you're what gonna, would You're going to screw up. Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, you're, uh, we talk about 100%. that all the time. You're going to find ways of screwing up. We're guys. Like, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> We're humans. The you're women gonna, exactly. fuck up just as much you're as gonna, we do. Everybody fucks up <laughs> at some point. Everybody up. makes a mistake. I've been down that road where I missed the double squeeze on the arm and yeah. I was like <laughs> sitting there just doing my thing and whatever and I got the double squeeze and I'm like, why are you pulling my arm? Where well, would you, you all know that story, right? I mean... Samantha gets the double squeeze, and she promptly <laughs> says to everybody, oh, I'm getting the double squeeze. I guess it's time to leave. <laughs> that defeats the whole purpose of the double squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> the double squeeze is supposed to be settled. It's like that yeah. safe word, right? right. Yeah. Oh, um, Lord. Wh- so what would it be like as you guys, when you guys were starting out, what do you think would be the best advice you could have given yourself when starting out in the LS? Slow down. Mm-hmm. Slow down. Slow little, up. Yeah. Little yeah. Down. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have Take to do everything right now. And everyone. That, that was actually because we didn't know, like, oh, I don't want to be a swinger or have a revolving door of people. Nothing we didn't sure. realize that there was time. And we didn't know that there was community which would make this time. Mm, that right. This is a never-ending, around every corner yeah, not- is a new experience, and you don't have to... Do everything right now. Yeah, it's not. It's the. It's not an eclipse. Like it'll yeah. come around. Yeah. You know, tomorrow if you want it to. So. Well, you, and you, then, you don't have to be first. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, that goes back to like when you probably started. It's like when you had that first experience. You're like, oh, that was fucking awesome. Yeah. Right. And then you go to the next one. You're like, oh, that was even better. Well, but the first one can be bad. Like we all know that there's like mm-hmm. there are some stories of people not having the greatest first time. Right. Which we hope that if you don't have a great first time, you try it again. Yeah. But one hundred. At that point where you're like that, f- that first time when you get to like yeah. actually feel what you wanted to feel from that whole like the whole experience, you're like, oh. you're hooked. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. You're never getting out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel it's like almost like practicing an instrument. You suck at first, and the more practice you do, get, you have at it, the better you get at. It. And now I'm at a point where there's been some moments I'm like, holy shit, there is like true, authentic emotion, feeling physical mental it, and it all comes together whereas you know you're playing a concerto almost oh yeah. my god i finally got all the notes right and it felt right fuck then i'm still stuck on a freaking <laughs> harmonics <laughs> 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 yeah, he mixed up his room <laughs> <cube again, and laughs> he's all fucked up he didn't know how to get back to the all white side <laughs> for the orange side but the white side will get fucked up don't again. don't say all white side it's so good. <laughs> Um, so what would you say to somebody that would want to get into the ls but is like worried about the stigma of like being in a non-monogamous relationship don't tell anyone (laughs) yeah well Well, oh oh, oh, no 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 okay but yeah don't tell anyone but i can see where you're coming from but look at it i looked at it this way if someone sees you on a website 
they're there too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So there's kind of a built-in Mexican security blanket. There, right? They're like, yeah, Mexican standoff. That's what it is. Like, yeah, you're here too, so go ahead and out me. I'll out you back. Like, yeah. I think, you know, but I mean, as, as uh, members and, uh, you know, we all have to be good at citizens of this community yeah, right so to yeah, sort of yeah, take yeah. away that stigma like to your point again ew swinger is such a dirty word and i can sort of see where I, that comes from having met people that i go and i oh yeah, wait yeah, yeah. they're they're cut from the same cloth as you don't be so judgy there yeah. mister because yeah, yeah. they're doing their thing and why are you judging them for being i mean it, perhaps it, it, a little this, whatever, this whatever. day and age though too like i mean when i grew up I mean, when was that? My it was a long time ago. <laughs> but I mean, my dad's Playboys were like, uh, yeah, yeah, they were reference texts, yeah. sort of thing. Right? <laughs> so I, mean, I guess what I'm going with this is that my advice would be to Google lifestyle and look at there's, oh yeah, what's that book? Uh, Listen to about, podcasts like the do- Sex at Dawn or something. I mean, there's Sex at Dawn, there's some yeah. great books out there to understand to take away that. Hey, stigma of not, this not could be the way we're supposed to all do it. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. those fuckers screwed it up yeah. way back when. They really More did. More likely, and right? And if you're talking about anybody in this room, yeah, I would still say that all those guys fucked up. Sure. But, and it's but, like, we all wish we knew about this lifestyle when we were younger. Yeah. And that's science. I'm but, not, but here's the beauty you know? of the lifestyle, right? Unlike other communities with, you know, like, let's say the LGBTQ, plus, plus, yes, uh, helicopter community, um, they have a legitimate concern, right, in that they're not recognized. We don't have to come out. Yeah, we don't have to. We come don't out. have to come out. If we want to, we can come out. Right. But we have that choice, right? So we have far more flexibility than some yeah. of these other groups. If yeah, that's true. Well, I, I don't know if I agree with that. We, depending on who you are, if you want to be true to yourself and you just want everyone to know you are, this is who I am, and deal with it, accept it, then it's the same. Um, yeah. So you guys all, you guys all no. have kids. So that's, yeah. that's the next question. You guys all have kids, yeah. and you guys obviously have families, members, and stuff like that. Does anybody, do your kids know? One. No. Stan? I don't think so. Terrence? Maybe not directly. Michael? No. 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 Does your family members, any in your like direct no, family, no. brothers, sisters, do they know? Yes. Stan? No. Terrence? Yes. No. 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 And then... Have you told your muggle friends? Yeah, I mean, I've got a, I've got a, I don't know, a friend or two that I might have confided in. One for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. A lot of my muggle friends suspect something is up, but I prefer the uh, illusion or the aura yeah. and mystery surrounding that. So let them make up their own stuff. Honestly, uh, I don't have many muggle friends anymore because of it. Well, and that was one of my questions yeah. that I was talking about. It's like it almost impacts your like the relationships you have around you, right? Like yeah. again, more you start to, you start to get into these relationships with your friends that get down to a point where you can't talk about the things you want to talk about anymore, right? Absolutely. And you start, yeah. right? Yeah, and you start to be able to like talk about these things that you've always wanted to talk about, but we're always too shy of, you know, potentially talking about your feelings or stuff like that. Like, you know, we we joked about it when we were starting to do this that we were going to talk about feelings, <laughs> and right, and we're not. Wait, well, <laughs> we haven't talked about feelings yet, but we it kind of goes down that path where we're actually getting deeper friendships. That like, you know, there's always those people that say like the people you went to university or high school with yeah. will always be your friends if you stick around home or stick around the university and you go to the same places and you do all that stuff. I think this lifestyle, when you start getting into it, these people will be your friends for life. Oh, yeah. You know, sure. Your friends yeah. are people you do stuff with. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. We, to, 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 no, but dude, that's what do happened. vanilla right. stuff with too, right? D- I didn't say you did necessarily <laughs> bang. No, I would have said friends are you know, no. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, but seriously, like I mean, the people in your life are people you do stuff with, whether it's your whether you're banging or you're yeah. hanging out, right? Banging and, or hanging, banging or hanging. There we go. Put that there on a shirt. Right? Put that on a t-shirt. We got <laughs> right? ourselves. On. But that, but that's that's the reality of it, right? So I mean, yeah, I have more friends in the lifestyle now, and I do still have some vanilla friends. But yeah, yeah. when I go to their Christmas parties. I'm bored out of my skull, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is why I don't have vanilla friends. Well, you know. <laughs> I'm bored. Yeah, I mean, it's because it, it does make it difficult to. Uh, well, no, it's not necessarily that no, we're shallow. We're, it's just that, the, like, if I wanted yeah. to sit there and be honest with you and I wanted to tell you about my yeah. actual fucking weekend that I had, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Well, the worst, I can't yeah. sit there and say that. To but you. the worst part is the vanilla friends who you know are on the cusp. 
Yeah, and oh. they are thinking they're so edgy and oh you just came Lord. from like this five person, ten person orgy from the night before and they're yeah. trying to freak you out with the whatever fancy underwear that the and you're just like so good for wow. you. I'm so happy for that you. Is right? Awesome. Well Your that's head would be, explode if you knew what I yeah, right? did on like, Friday. Like yeah. being yeah. honest with myself, I can't hang around. I can't allow myself to tolerate that boredom. It's time. I'm the same way. Most of my direct friends are literally people in lifestyle. You guys sitting in this room. So actually, that was awesome. Thank you for the tips for men for men. (laughs) And now we're going to cut to another quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to do the IG questions that we received from our Instagram followers. We want to say that we know it can sometimes feel lonely navigating this world of open relationships. We know that it can be difficult to find people to talk with. We know because we've been through it. And although we certainly are not therapists or licensed psychologists, we know that sometimes all you need is just somebody to talk to. We've helped hundreds of people on their journey with non-monogamy and are passionate about helping thousands more. We offer private coaching to anyone interested in opening up their relationship and reach out to us for multiple reasons. It could be that they're struggling to get out to a club and are looking for a little extra encouragement, or they may not know how to go about discussing their fantasies and desires with their partner. Visit sexuninterrupted.com slash book online to schedule your free 10-minute one-on-one session today. Welcome back to Sex Interrupted with Tara and James. So now we're going to cut to the IG questions that we received from our Instagram followers. And if you want to uh, be part of our show by giving us questions, you can follow us at sex.uninterrupted on Instagram. So the first question I received for you guys is, do you think there's a stigma for women in non-monogamous relationships versus men? Or do you think the stigma um, is... Like a label or something? That yeah. Yeah, I honestly... So, single women, unicorns, if you will, I don't like that term, but I think so. I, I feel like society in general just puts women down for yeah, one I mean, set. 100. I agree with that. And do you think that there's... So, you think that there's a lesser stigma for men? It's more of like a high-five boys club if you shared it with your muggle friends, almost. Um, oh, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In, in, oh. in general society, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think yeah. if we're talking about singles, yeah, for sure. There is definite yeah. disparity. I think if you're talking about couples, I think couples get painted with the same brush. I think so. Yeah, I agree with that. They're freaks. Or yeah. they're not, right? Or yeah. they're interesting. Burning in, in, in uh, eternal fire. I hope but so. For the men in the lines of there. freaking <laughs> places, call your studio is cold, man. But I could if, use some eternal fire. If right you're now. a woman, I feel the it's a woman's game oh, lifestyle. So oh, yeah. if you enjoy sex and you want to get into it without shame, the women have the run of the show. This is you, you can only go as fast as that lead dog. Yeah. That's the sled. I'm sorry. That's, yeah, that's yeah. just the way they always say it. Thank you for fast, another fast is the slowest person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the next question I got, if you start to feel an emotional connection with a woman who isn't your partner, should you continue? It all depends on everybody's rules and comfort level. No. Michael says no. <laughs> How about you, Stan? I, I mean, I hate to say it. I'm on the fence. I think you just, it depends how mature you are and, 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 and how you're able to process. I mean, if you've got this fantasy that maybe a polyamorous arrangement or maybe it's, even, maybe it's something that's more, you know, heinous than, the feels, than, man. than that. I mean, I think, it, I think you, yeah, you gotta yeah, be bad medicine for you. You gotta be ready for it. I'm not judging you for it. So no, but I, I'm not okay, saying so never, okay, let, me throw this, so let me, let me, it's, let me, it's, have fire. a difference of opinion. Let yeah. me, yeah, let me qualify my no. Okay, so, go, 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 ahead, go, go. All right. Look, infatuations will happen. Yeah. And people get infatuated. And sure, you know news. it's just an infatuation yeah. and you got the yeah. pots and you freaking keep going, no problem. If you're talking about true feelings, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is going beyond a sort of you know high school infatuation level, I think you should take a moment to check yourself and, and where you're well, at. Okay, well, I'm because, not disagreeing with that. Then, then you're just, going down the poly path. And agreed. No, nothing wrong with poly, but agreed. different podcast. Agreed, but what if you're okay with that? 
Well, then you're probably. I think we're saying the same thing, Bart. Well, you're just heading down the same path. Like we're all we all agreeing that in like consensual non-monogamy in that sort of lifestyle, polyamory is still part of that sort yeah, of life. I that agree. in that sort of group of Fair relationships enough. and the way you want to construct it. So if you did get feelings, again, we would hope that at a certain point you would have the you know, the decency to tell your yeah. partner about that whole yeah, exactly. thing. Have an obligation. Exactly. Yeah, an obligation, an obligation, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Because it's, you want to honor weird, your relationship. Like, it's... You, well, you want to honor the relation, your relationship first, your primary relationship. Like, we always talk about having that, we're 100% emotionally monogamous with one another, yet we're non-monogamous, right? Like, like for us, we're 100% emotionally monogamous. We do everything together. We like to play together. We like to do all of this stuff together. So it's like, but we still always maintain that when we're coming home, we're going to come home with each other. See, and right? we are in a different space. We actually don't play together. And well, we do, but we also play a part. Right. And there, we've talked about that potential for feels to come up. But just because we've talked about it. Because what if it did? Has it happened? No. Okay. But what if it did? What would we be, what would we think? So we've talked about it just to have that uh, that, that philosophical discussion to maybe be ready. What yeah. Are we ready for something like that? Yes? No? Then that gives us a bit of a guideline as to, oh, okay, yeah. if this did happen, I kind of have an idea of where. Yeah, I, I admire poly folks, but I'm just, I, I, I look at my 24 hours in a day. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> no, a whole different yeah, story. That's a whole different story. We have enough time. The time but, is yeah, a different story. That's a different but story. That, but time is everything, that, right? That, I get it. That's a, that's probably the most slip, one of the most slippery slopes yeah. is that emotion. Now, you, yeah. you, you said, you said it. Great. I'm going to write that person. Yeah, good, I'm going to tell him to stop asking stupid questions. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a great question. Like I think question. we'll give you a difference of opinions. There's Whoever different people that are in different. It made me uncomfortable. There you go. There you go. That's a great question so how do you uncomfortable honesty go next question how do you typically initiate the conversation about sdi testing with potential playmates <laughs> you laugh no <laughs> it never comes up um, we just fuck no <laughs> no we we do we do bring it up and we bring it up if, if if we have an opportunity we say yeah you know we get tested how about you guys my last panel was done a month ago and now in Calgary, here we have great services. They'll come to you and do your panel. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So it's it's not it's it's real shit. I mean, it's uncomfortable. It's nasty. You don't want it. So but bring it up. You bring like it up. It just quick. That's just, it. It's it's not literally it that hard have to kill the vibe. It's no. kill well, the vibe. there's you know? a there's a kind of unwritten rule about like well, not unwritten. Be f- up front. Yeah. yeah. Be honest. If you well, take it, care of your shit. Like yeah, I mean, right. let's. I mean. All of us in this room have hung out together and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know what I mean? And, and I, you know, we didn't necessarily ask each other, but there's like, it's got, come up. We got your shit together. It's come up. Yeah. Right? It's come up with us. It's come up with us. Come up with us. Yeah. And I yeah. think, it's, I think you, at a certain point, it was a lot, and it's almost like, when was the last time you were tested? It's yeah. just as simple as, yeah. what was the last time you really knew that you were 100% clean? But not clean. I don't want to say clean because that cleans like yeah. another wrong word. Like, right. when did you test negative? Yeah. But. It's no different than dating single. There's a certain, you do a risk profile. Absolutely. And my comfort level with you as a couple, a person, comes from discussions, understanding a bit of your history, what do you like, a bit of uh, gauging my gut yeah. feel, and all of that together it says, yeah, we're good, condoms, very low risk. Right. Well, you obviously you're reducing your risk. Yeah. Let's go to the next question. Do you feel like you lose your connection with your partner when you're fucking or coming someone else? No. <laughs> In unison, they cried. No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. All and right. I'll wait that person to ask, stop asking. Yeah. In, fact, In <laughs> fact, my partner loves it. Yeah. To see you satisfied. To that was one of the that was one of the big, satisfied. That yeah. was one of the biggest yeah. things that people tits. why they remain in the lifestyle is because they like to see their significant other yeah. happy and satisfied. Come Persian. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if a man has alpha traits, what? then does he manage? How does he manage to be around other alphas? <laughs> That's uh, a stupid question. I didn't really get anything. I think he grabbed some white widow and a, yeah. If you have to identify yourself as an alpha male, this you're not. Probably is, you're, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got news for you. And <laughs> you your yeah. trouble to start with. Your ego will be cut down pretty quickly, I think, if in this lifestyle. Oh, yeah, you'll oh, get humbled yeah. for sure. Well, like we said before, like, um, I think 
almost Mr. Duddy here, Stan, he said that uh, uh, women are the ones that stir the coffee. Pretty yeah, much. they're the straw that stirs the drink. That's right, James. <laughs> so alpha doesn't yeah. cut it. Yeah. Um, so next question. What brings you butterflies after being in it for so long? Oh, well, I mean, I, I, I think I would just, that's a good word. I mean, butterflies, yeah, yeah. it's, it's that whole, I mean, remember in grade seven when you asked that first girl out to the movies yeah. or whatever. Like, Does she like me? Yeah. You know, it's, it's getting the note back that says, yes. yeah. Like it's, yeah. 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 It's that interaction. I mean, I love the sex. Sex is crazy. It's, it's fun. It's, it's awesome. It's validation. But there's, it's yeah. that, hey, it's I've still got some right? game or yeah, it's, it's whatever. Ego. Not, Man, yeah, honestly, ego. it's an yeah. ego stroke. Yes. Which there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. We all like to feel wanted. That's yep. what gives me the butterflies. Is is that new person, and, and you're unsure, is, and you chat a bit, and like, oh, oh my God, they're as dirty and filthy as I am, and they like this and I like yeah. that, and holy shit, there's a date. Oh my God, I think it's gonna go. Oh yay! Yeah. Now go. It's, it's progressing, right? And right. It's like <laughs> I, I still feel like sometimes when you set up a date, I still get those kind I of butterflies. Still get butterflies. Like, yeah. And oh, yeah, I know, I, mean. I know. I, I was watching this thing the other day. It's like we don't like to have any expectations when we go out. But I have to curb that thought because the fact of the matter is, is that you can't tell me that you have a little bit of expectation yeah. that you got the babysitter. Yeah. You, you shaved. <laughs> yes. You did this. Well, you spent the sixty bucks to go out to a club. So there's some form of expectation. <laughs> We like to limit them in what we like to try to talk about because, again, you don't want to have too many expectations because I always say if something happens, you come out ahead. Yeah, but there's a difference between preparation and expectation. Ah, yeah, right. Right. Oh, that's a good there way to go. You're a boy scout. Terrence. James. You're the well, word I'm just, try, I'm just <laughs> trying to say, like, again, there still is that point of like point of context and if you went to a lifestyle club with your significant other that you did took all this work you spent the 60 bucks to go you you know you got the uber you had you bought the bottle of liquor I, I, I just again that's and just get... preparation because the expectation is built in you're right. going to a lifestyle club you're not going to a bar yeah they're Everyone else is going to a lifestyle club yeah, but too. How, how do you gauge success? I mean, if, if you go and tour all that trouble and then you don't connect with someone, so that's is where that expectation comes in. That's your scorecards are different, right? Yeah. right? This is where your that's your personal card, expectation yeah. level of. Okay, I expect something to happen. I expect yeah. to get laid, and right. I didn't. Therefore, I'm unhappy. But if yeah. you just go in, if you're going into it as I really am, just wanting an experience, and I don't know what's going to happen, take it for what it is and, and go. Yeah. Then you're good. Then you're going. Plus, I like it. Plus, the the experience doesn't come to you. Like, I mean, it is yeah. what you make yeah. it. You yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely have to make that you sort of... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, wow. You want to be? <laughs> wow, look at you, Wordsmith. Terrence. Um, <laughs> next next <laughs> one I got here. here. <laughs> Do you find <laughs> other... I'm okay. Sorry. All right. We're done now? <laughs> yeah. No. All right. No. Good. Do you find other men to be competitive? Yes. No. Of course they are. Come on. Okay, okay go. you're revealing go, 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 go. a lot about yourself here, Michael. I like no, it. No, go, 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 go. Absolutely, go. there is. A, there's definitely always going to be a love for Come on, and you guys are liars. I will, I will say this. Yes. No, no. Stop I would it. say I. You guys are liars. I've been in situations new where couple, I go. New wait couple a shows second, up. What's... New hot couple shows up in lifestyle. Don't tell me you're like. I don't have to be first, but it's a herd of alpha dogs, man. Exactly, right? Like, don't right? tell me there isn't. Yeah, but you're not an alpha if you said it. So. There is. There is your reptilian brain. Call it what you will. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> what I meant was there is much, much less competition, yeah. I feel, personally. It's competition in other ways. I mean, I think you're you're trying, you know, you look at it and say, fuck, she's, she's talking to Terrence over there. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? <laughs> you know, Why not me? What what jokes is he telling her? Why oh, is she her. laughing so hard? I can <laughs> tell her jokes. Yeah, I got I jokes. I got some I pirate got, jokes. Yeah, I tell. and you do. Oh, I heard a great pirate joke. Okay, okay. we're not getting in the pirate but, jokes. But I think, <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to stop it there. Thank you guys again you. so much for being on the show. I, this was a very informative panel. I thought you guys did a very fantastic job, you. other than you guys are a bunch of jerks. Yeah, of course. Anyways, um, yes, if you we want to, uh, next week we are going to be live at 5 p.m., Pacific time, 8 p.m. Um, sorry, did I say that right? I think you're good. Eastern Standard Time. Yep, there that's you right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, on the Sexy Lifestyle Network. And until then, keep it sexy. Thank you for tuning into the show. 
If you enjoyed this sexy show, you can find more at sexuninterrupted.com. Don't forget that you can also follow us on Twitter at SXUninterrupted, Instagram at sex.uninterrupted, Facebook, and YouTube. If you want to directly support what we do, please check out patreon.com slash sexuninterrupted today and join our community. 